Hopefully my connection is good enough to do this. Hey everybody. I just was popping on here real quick. Um, I did a, oh, sorry for the shaking. I did a Facebook Live earlier today and um, I wanted to share it here because I have the same question for y'all on Instagram as I have for people on Facebook, but um, I could not figure out how to share the same video. So just gonna do another quick video, real quick because I just have a couple questions. I'm hoping you all can help me. Anybody who's watching, and thank you, those of you who are here. Um, I was today. I was working on creating content for Trauma Therapist Network, my new platform, and one of the things that's included in the membership starting in March is a training workshop. Every month there will be one like hour long training workshop group call by video that will be either me or a guest that I bring in to do training on a topic related to our work as trauma therapists. So, oh, poor connection. Um, so, sorry for my pet sounds in the background here. Um, so, what I was doing is coming up with some topics for the trainings and I was wondering, mm -hmm. Those of you who are therapists who want to learn more about working with clients who have trauma or those of you who already work with clients who have trauma, what do you think would be some good training topics? And if you're not a therapist at all, then why do I have a poor connection? I don't know. Maybe you're someone who's in therapy and these are things that you think are important for people to know about or you wish your therapist knew more about. Uh, I would just love to hear from you. So um, some of the topics that I've come up with for this, um, let's see. One thing is why being a trauma-informed clinician is important. Obviously that's like the most basic. Hi, Heather. Um, so I was just, and any of you who are listening who are not trauma therapists, um, you have valuable feedback to share as well about what what therapists need to know about working with trauma survivors. Even if you aren't a trauma survivor, I'm sure you have some thoughts about it. And I would love for people to share their suggestions in the comments. So um, one of the most basic things to start off with will be why being trauma-informed is important for therapists. Um, how to identify burnout in mental health professionals and techniques in working with burnout. Um, treatment planning using a three-phase approach for, you know, like the, the trauma therapy method of, uh, or perspective of using a three-phase approach. Hey, thanks, Joshua. <laughs> Says, we love you, Laura. That's nice. <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, so introduction to dissociation, um, so how therapists can identify when a client is dissociating and help the client identify this as well. Well, thank you, Femalian666, for saying my voice is soothing. I appreciate that. Um, you never know how your voice sounds. Thanks, Julie. So nice to have the feedback while I'm doing this live because it's pretty awkward sitting here talking to myself. <laughs> and the connection keeps going out. So it's nice to know that people actually are paying attention. Thank you for your kind words, all of you. Um, so yeah, introduction to dissociation to help therapists, help clients identify when dissociation is happening. And once you can identify dissociation, you know, and become more mindful of it when it occurs, then that will help you um, feel less out of control with dissociation, which is one of the problems that it causes. Um, and I wanted to do a specific episode on depersonalization and derealization because I think that a lot of people who are in therapy have depersonalization and derealization at times. And they it's so subtle that it's hard to even know it's happening to you. But... Um, once you identify that it's happening, 
and your therapist knows it's happening, they can help you to return to being in your body and then give you strategies to stay in your body when that happens. So I think that's an important thing and I want to cover that. And structural dissociation, which I know is something that people uh, are curious about. Therapists may have heard about it. Clients may have heard about it. Um, differential diagnosis. So um, discerning whether symptoms are present due to trauma and dissociation or some other mental health disorder. Hint, it's usually trauma. Um, trauma-informed assessment, which goes along with that, and more than just like talking about which um, measures I use when measuring PTSD symptoms, it, it's about how you assess what to look for, what lets you know that um, trauma may be present. It's not always as straightforward as what's in the DSM, shockingly. Hi, Demetra. Thanks. It's so nice to have you here. Demetra is such a devoted listener and responds to my emails. And, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful. I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm remembering, Demetra, that you're all the way in Germany, too. So I really appreciate that. Um, please correct me if you're not in Germany and you're in another country. I, I believe that I'm remembering that correctly. Um, yeah, and so another thing that I'm planning on teaching about is conceptualizing how you're going to work with this client over the course of their therapy process um, based on the, um, okay, Demetra says trainings on co-regulation would be helpful. Okay, I'm going to make a note of that, co-regulation. Another thing that someone commented that they would like to learn about mm -hmm. is um, helping clients work with dreams and nightmares, which are very common in trauma treatment, and religious and spiritual trauma. Um, and I'd love to get an expert to come, because this is not my area of expertise, but I would love to have an expert come and talk about Munchausen by proxy and Munchausen syndrome, because I know that that is um, something that certainly if you are a victim of Munchausen by proxy, where you're the patient who's made to be sick or, you know, someone is pretending you're sick and you're having unwanted treatments. That's deeply traumatic. And I'd love to um, have someone teach about that because podcast listeners have been asking for that. And it's not something that I know enough about to really share uh, it with any expertise. Um, but I can sense that it would be deeply traumatic. So if anybody knows an expert in Munchausen, syndrome or Munchausen by proxy, please. Eminem mentioned he struggled with that. I didn't know that. Got any more info about that, Joshua? I'd love to hear. Um, so yeah, those are the topics that I came up with so far. And um, any questions that people or any additional suggestions that any of you may have as uh, about other trainings, I would love to know. So I'll just take like five minutes if anybody wants to ask anything real quick before I, I got to go make dinner. <laughs> but um, since you're here, if there's anything anybody wants to ask or say, just feel free and I'll try to answer if I can. Let me see if there's anything here in the chat that I missed. missed. <laughs> All right, I know there's a little bit of a lag, but um, if there's no questions, trainings, trainings how to teach self-regulation. Okay, I know somebody who's really good at that, and um, they may want to teach Dan Brown's Attachment Disturbances Pillars. Okay, I know Dan Brown has a, a course on attachment. I don't know, Joshua, if you've checked that out or not, but um, 
I can try to find the information on that and post it. My connection got messed up again. Um, but yeah, I'll try to post um, Dan Brown or his course as a comment here, though I don't know if it includes the pillars. Um, another person who co-wrote his Attachment Disturbances book is Deirdre Fay. And she also has a course called Becoming Safely Embodied and a few, um, yeah, I would think so too, Joshua. It probably would include that. So you might be able to find it yourself, but I'll go ahead and post it here um, after I finish this live so I can, um, so anybody else who wants to find it can have it too. Joshua, you got any more information about that M&M thing? It's weird trying to talk to y'all. Okay. It was between him and his mom when he was a kid. His mom, did his mom allegedly do that to him? Is that what the, the situation was? Oh, giving him a lot of medications. Hmm. You know what? It's kind of thought provoking because, um, this might be kind of controversial to say, but I think I'm saying this from a compassionate heart. Um, it's very common for parents to realize that something is affecting their child. Now, I'm not saying this was a situation with Eminem and his mom, because I don't really know. I don't know anything about that. But um, if the parent realizes that the child is not okay, and they don't know why, oftentimes it's an attachment or trauma problem. And they're taking them around to all these different doctors and specialists and they're getting all these diagnoses. I mean, I say this all the time. When I started in the mental health field as a clinician out of grad school, um, I saw so many children who were so heavily medicated with antipsychotics who actually had PTSD from abuse and other trauma they had experienced. So, you know, this was not a parent deliberately drugging the child when they didn't need the drugs, but it is a child being given antipsychotics and other major heavy, heavy, many of which were not even approved for children in that use, like it would be, um, you know, for adults or teens and being given to younger kids, like kids being diagnosed with bipolar at six and seven. And really it's their behavior is because of trauma. So that's not Munchausen by proxy, unless that's a new definition of it that I haven't heard of, but it's definitely deeply harmful to the child and their development. Yeah, it is really sad. Um, so, you know, that's one of the reasons that I'm so determined to really get the word out about the importance of people understanding trauma is real. It affects people, but it can heal. So, okay, Sarah Paulson has the movie called Run that I think encapsulate this as well. I'll have to check that out. Um, but yeah, I mean, trauma is real. Healing is possible. Help is available. That's why I created Trauma Therapist Network because there's too many people walking around going to therapy for 10, 15, 20 years that is not trauma informed and they have trauma in their background. And even they may have told their therapist they have trauma, but they never get trauma treatment. And there is a special type of therapy for trauma. Um, trauma therapy is different. It's looking at the root cause and healing that instead of just working with trying to change the symptoms, you know, with new coping strategies. I mean, we need coping strategies as we're in the healing process, but the, um, if the 
focus is pathologizing the behavior instead of understanding that this is a reaction that's in a lot of ways not really in the person's control. I mean, it's unconscious. It's an unconscious reaction. It might be something that's developed over years and years and years, and now this is their pattern of behavior. Yeah, I wouldn't, um, Joshua's asking, is this more of a psychodynamic approach? And yeah, I mean, that's that's what I'm thinking. But I would say trauma therapy is, um, it can be done in a lot of different ways. I mean, some types of trauma therapy are more, symptom reduction based like um you know you could have um there's so many different types i don't want to start talking about that but it could be symptom based cbt 10 to 12 weeks getting symptom reduction but that is not healing the trauma the healing part comes from really understanding the impact of the trauma what um it has done to interfere with the person's development and how you know they're disconnected from their emotions and their relationships because of the trauma and then rebuilding those bonds like you were talking about with Dan Brown earlier Joshua um you know the attachment bonds rebuilding trust rebuilding a belief a belief that relationships can be safe and healing from the ways that it has impacted us. So, you know, it's it's neuroscience based. It's usually somatically oriented. Not all trauma therapy because if you look in Trauma Therapist Network, a lot of the therapists there are using CBT, which is, you know, an evidence-based practice and that's great. But yes, that's what Demetra is saying. For me, it's a good mix between different kind of therapy methods, but specific in terms of the core subject, trauma. So, I don't, have enough, I don't have enough time to go into this the way I would like to right now. Yeah, so Joshua says, I'm an adoptee and counselor, and I know this affects a lot of adoptees. I appreciated your podcast episode with Amy. Yeah, it was Amy Sugeno. Um, trauma is huge with adoptees. That's very true. And um, Joshua, you should, you should check out Brooke Randolph. Brooke Randolph, R-A-N-D-O-L-P-H who is a therapist who specializes in adoption using brain spotting. She's going to be on the podcast soon. I uh, interviewed a couple months ago, and um, she really has a, a brilliant perspective on adoption. I can't wait to bring that uh, episode but to everybody. But, yeah, I agree with Demetra. It's an eclectic approach, but the focus is that trauma is the cause of these symptoms. A not trauma-focused approach would be Yeah, you got it, Joshua. Um, A not trauma-informed focus would be that the person has these symptoms and you know they have trauma, but you're telling them that the reasons they have these symptoms are because they have bipolar, schizoaffective disorder, borderline personality disorder, um, major depressive disorder, schizophrenia. Uh, Those are some of the common, or, or if it's a child, very, very common ADD or ADHD, which they could have, but Gabor Mate would say that's still from trauma, um, and I agree. But um, it, I keep pausing because of the poor connection. Um, it's recognizing that, you know, if you have somebody sitting here and their diagnosis is PTSD, bipolar, uh, major depressive disorder, and... Um, oppositional defiant disorder, for example. You probably could have just said they had trauma, just PTSD, and it would explain the other, the behavior that go along with those other diagnoses. Yeah, so, I mean, Joshua, it's tricky because the DSM doesn't just say trauma. I mean, they have trauma-related disorders, but um, I think that most of the diagnoses in the in the DSM really just describe the behaviors which are really caused by trauma. They come from trauma, attachment wounds, complicated grief, which is also, you know, a type of, could be traumatic. So, gosh, I don't have time to stay here. I wish <laughs> we're having this conversation and it's so fun. 
I love talking with y'all. I wish I could talk more. I didn't expect anybody to really watch, but I'm glad I happened to catch you all. Maybe you're making Maybe you're in the middle of making dinner too. I got to go make my dinner, um, but I will be back and you know where I am anyway. I'm on Therapy Chat or you can find me on um, Trauma Therapist Network. And I'm going to try to do a few more lives because I'm making sure as many people as possible can hear about Trauma Therapist Network. And if you are a trauma-focused therapist, um, yes, Demetra, thank you. You can you can help him <laughs> if, if he's done sure what we're talking about but um yes please continue to talk amongst yourselves and if anyone wants to comment with some ideas about trainings i got co-regulation um and how to regulate teaching regulation um and i'll be happy to accept any other ideas that y'all want to post in the comments and i will definitely consider them i'm so excited to be doing all of this with Trauma Therapist Network. And I'm so grateful to all of you for taking a moment to watch this and and participate. It makes it so much more fun, definitely. I'm, I'll definitely come back and see if I can catch a few people again because it's fun to talk with you all. All right, that's it for now. Thanks. I'll let my dog say goodbye to you. Say bye. Say bye. Yes, you good girl. <laughs> now, as always, I have to figure out how to turn this off. All right, <laughs> hold on. There we go. Yes.